Magnet television. Magnet television. Magnet television. You're watching Magnet television because what else are you going to do? Hi, I'm Tim from the band Strand of Oaks, coming to you from Austin, Texas. This is for Magnet Magazine, and I'm going to answer some questions. As it stands right now, my all-time favorite song would have to be the Blue Nile, Tinsel Town in the Rain. I don't think... There's ever been a song that evokes every emotion that I look for in music as much as Tinsel Town in the Rain. It's romantic. It's, uh, gorgeous. It's, it's filled with sadness, but that kind of sadness that comes from love and I, I'm simply just moved to it. It doesn't matter how many times I hear that song. It takes me somewhere that I, I need to go. And uh, it's a wonderful song to dance by yourself in the bathroom to. And kind of imagine uh, Kate Bush choreography done by someone that looks like me in the shower. <laughs> And that's, that's how I like to experience Tinseltown in the rain. I, it just keeps going and getting stronger and, and it's, it's a perfect song. I am, it's one of those things that you're lucky that you get to, get to experience in your life that someone was inspired enough to write a work of beauty to that degree, but that's my all-time favorite song. Many, many big, big questions coming from Magnet Magazine. Uh, I would say an album that changed my life and um, set me on a course that has brought me immense joy and fulfillment in my active listening experience would be uh the congos heart of the congos i was in uh utrecht uh, netherlands at my friend lenny's coffee shop uh the village coffee and i uh just asked him because i knew he had great taste in music i asked him what's the best dub record dub reggae record ever and without hesitation he said heart of the congos so I went and bought that record and he was right. It's a mountain of a record produced by Lee Scratch Perry. And it took me down a path into the world of dub music that did change my life because I, I witnessed a kind of music that my DNA was asking for forever and I didn't know it. And there is a physicality and, and truthfulness to the production of a lot of those famous, uh, producers down there, King Tubby, Scientist, uh, Lee Scratch Perry, many others. But it was, it's something that I, I need to put on on a daily basis when I'm home and I, can be transported to wherever I want to be. And I can hear fingers on the, the faders and I can hear fingers touching the, the echoplex and I can hear the decisions being made in real time in the music on top of amazing singing and instrument playing. And, um, it, it is, it definitely has changed my life and also affected my bank account because I have now begun a many years pursuit into walking into a record store and they eye me up and I instantly go to the dub section. And if it's a significant dub section, dub section, they kind of know that they're going to get a pretty big amount of money out of me because I just need to find that mix, whatever it may be. If it's King Tubby just messing with a hi-hat for 
a whole album. It's something that I, something that I crave and brings me just an immense amount of joy. And, uh, yeah, it changed my life. So the Congos, heart of the Congos. Well, participated in most Strand of Oak shows I've ever played are my favorite, simply because I get to play music in front of people and do what I've dreamt about since I was little, just getting to sing and play guitar and have that reflect back from the audience. That's the best concert I could imagine, but attended concerts it would probably have to be uh, Underworld at Primavera Sound in Barcelona, probably 2015. I uh, had played the same stage much earlier that night, and uh, I had, you know, my first love some for some reason at 12 or 13 was dance music and rave music and and a lot of the amazing things coming out of the UK. And I was in the audience and was with tens of thousands of people that were on the same level of uh, pure, pure living, like pure, unadulterated embracing of life. And I thought things like that only existed when you read British magazines when you're a teenager. And you, I didn't think I'd ever get to be a part of that. And the international quality of it, the, the amount of people from everywhere in the world dancing together and unified underneath the beat was something I, I only dreamt about. And I got to be there in the audience and see Carl lead us as this minister of rave to this worship-like environment. And it is something that you... It's easy to misunderstand because you just kind of have to be there. And I always wanted to be there and I got to be there with all those wonderful people in Barcelona. And I have never recovered from that in the best of ways. Like I, I just went somewhere and I never came back and I chased that feeling and in my music and in my life and where I want to spend my mental time. And it was, it was the best concert ever. And I may never get something like that again, but I'm glad I got that. And it was, uh, I'm forever grateful for Underworld and, uh, Primavera for giving me that. <clears throat> uh, there's been a lot of technical problems, but that kind of happens to everybody. In, if you're playing live, you forget to plug your guitar in or something like that. But, um, it was embarrassing. It was a learning moment, but this was very early on in Strain of Oak's career. And, uh, I was used to playing house shows and very, 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 very DIY events. And I got the opportunity around 2005 to open for Kimya Dawson of the moldy peaches and we were in the UK and we were playing real venues and I was not used to that. And I remember sitting down when we were getting set up and I asked the sound person why the speakers were pointed to me because the audience needed to hear it. And the sound person could have used this opportunity to really get one on me, like really make fun of me and, they didn't. And they just said, those are monitors and they are pointed back at you because they help you hear yourself and the other musicians on stage. And he turned the um, sound on and I quickly realized what monitors were there for. And it made me realize I need to sing in tune a little bit better. But that was a pretty embarrassing moment. And obviously there's been countless times where I played the most epic show and thought I was Pink Floyd at Pompeii and walk off stage and my fly has been down the entire show. But nobody gives a shit because it's a concert and we're not there to laugh at each other. And it's nice, but I should uh, 
check X, Y, Z, examine my zipper. And I do that now, but, um, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing, but I don't like, I don't like, uh, people getting embarrassed. It makes me real sad. I don't like when people trip or that kind of feeling that you would laugh at someone at a embarrassing moment seems extremely evil to me. So, uh, yeah, but luckily people are cool. Shows are cool and, uh, we all get embarrassed. Hope everybody's good out there. I've been Tim, and I'm going to drink another cup of coffee. Bye-bye. Sine.